Hey there. Welcome back to the Boston Bond. It's been a crazy few weeks out on the road, and I hope you guys enjoy the content I have for you. Remember to share the Boston Bond with your friends so we can share knowledge of the rideshare services like Uber and Lyft. They really do make the world an easier place to get around. This episode is going to take a lot of imagination since the conversations are just audio and there's not video of these passengers to go along. The first passenger you're going to hear is Hana. She's an office manager at a company in Boston and is loving it after years of restaurant managing and working in call centers. We chatted about the advantages of Uber and Lyft, overtaking regular cabs, and if you take a listen, you might just learn about something you didn't know before. Let's go ahead and ask her why she likes these platforms. And make sure to let me know if you agree with the passengers in the comments. I always enjoy taking a lift or a ride sharing over taxis because I always feel like, number one, the taxi drivers are always so rude or they're on the phone. So you don't really get like that human connection. But aside from that, I feel like they're really reckless with their driving. Whereas in a lift, you're in somebody's personal car with their own personal insurance. And yeah, Lyft and Uber do supplement that insurance to an extent so that you, if you do get into an accident, you're actually covered pretty well. Um, and although taxi drivers do have to go through some sort of licensing process to drive a taxi, they're not in their own personal cars. So I always feel like they're a little bit more reckless with their driving. Um, if you get into an accident, you don't always know exactly what you're going to be doing. Whereas when you're in a Lyft or an Uber, they know exactly where you are at that every given moment because the app says where you are and I've actually been in a car accident in a ride sharing. No way. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm and glad you a, have. It was so a we really can talk about. minor car accident. So like, yes, it was an interesting experience, and but nobody was hurt. My, um, my ride sharing driver at the time, I don't remember if I was in a Lyft or an Uber, but um, he actually ended up hitting somebody on a bicycle. <gasps> but the bicyclist was going very slow, and he kind of just like, didn't see her and just tipped her over so she was okay just shaking up um but we put her in the car and <laughs> took her home with us it was so bizarre that's but bizarre it was really bizarre but like it was kind of nice because there were three of us in the car so there were three riders and one driver and so the car was almost full and we had just enough room to stick her in the car with her bicycle. Oh my God. And um, we drove her to her house and obviously she filed a claim. And what's nice is that because um, the driver's protected to an extent, um, but it was obviously his fault because he hit her. But what was nice is that because they had a record of everybody in the car and in the, in the car of the ride sharing app, her insurance was actually able to reach out to individual riders and ask their account of the story. Okay. So I actually got a call from the, her insurance and it was like, what happened? Can you give us like an idea? Was he distracted? And, and we were kind of able to defend the driver who was really just driving and honestly didn't see her. And she came, yeah. like, kind of came out of nowhere. So it was kind of nice to be able to like voice your opinion. But also the, the app knew exactly where we were. And it was just like really interesting to have that experience because all of the information was logged through the app. That's which amazing. you don't have in a, in a taxi. Like you could get in an accident, your taxi could just take off on you like there's no record lie, of you ever yeah. being in that taxi which is really scary <laughs> that is amazing you've raised so many good points as to like why this is a great platform you know yeah. how to take rides and, and stuff and you get to meet cool people you get to meet I've amazing people I've been on many people. many dates with people I've met in my Uber pool no way yeah. really yeah wow I actually have a good friend that I met in a lift line that I met through lift line do you think that guy is still ride sharing the driver? Yeah. I know he's ride sharing because I got matched with him later on. Okay. Did you ask him if he's been getting into any, hit any more people on bikes and stuff? <laughs> no. We actually, <laughs> so the, the second time I was in his car, we, he was like. Do you happen to know if I'm staying on? Yeah. So we, I got in his car again and he recognized me and then I immediately recognized him and he was like, oh my gosh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I hope everything worked out all right with that uh, accident. And then we went out for a drink and then he didn't get back in the Uber and Uber. We didn't go out for a drink after. Oh. <laughs> he didn't turn the app on after? <laughs> no, 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 no. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. How do you feel about um, 
which one do you think is better? Which one do you like to use more? Or do you just use whichever one's cheaper? What do you find for major differences between the apps? Uber and Lyft. Yeah. Um, I tend to use Uber more um, only because I get, I have a really high rating on Uber for some reason. I also think I have a high rating on Lyft. Um, but I tend, because of my high rating on Uber, they send me a lot of promos, like 50% off rides for 10 days or something like that. So I tend to use whichever one is cheaper. And honestly, Uber just sends me more. But to be honest, more often than not, I have a better ride experience in the Lyft than in an Uber. What would you say the major differences are? The differences are usually with the driver. Okay. I feel like the drivers are a little bit more um, attentive to the customer experience. On Lyft? On Lyft. And with Uber, you kind of get more people who are just kind of like robotic about driving you from place to place. I also feel like the customer base in Lyft is much more friendly. When you get into like an Uber, you get in, you get in with like a lot of bros, like a lot of chads. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. I 100% agree. And I didn't want to be the only one to say it. So I'm glad that you're saying it. No, I agree. I think that when you get into an Uber, you know, more often than not, it's just people just trying to make their living, just driving people around. They don't care if there's no, there's any conversation, you know. I take Ubers sometimes, obviously, in Lyfts, and, and it's sad when you want to have a conversation as the passenger and the driver's just like, you know, piece of shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, dude, I know. And like, fucking you talk to me, talk, you know? But yeah, like, true, true, you're true. You're just, just, but like, if someone's trying to talk to you, I just think it's always nice because you never know what that person's going through. So true. Like, even if the person, even if the driver's just kind of like, wants to talk, could just be that they like had a really boring day or they had a really bad rider like, yeah they just need a little pick me up right happiness. i'm happy about today's lift rides because they've all been great i had a car full of like lawyer students law students from where suffolk i don't think so but they were like not like your like og like lawyer type like you know i find that a lot of people that are like lawyers in boston are studying law are like not very friendly, you know. Oh, what I, mean? I don't really. I wouldn't, couldn't tell you. I don't know any. Well, yeah, I know actually just, one person in law. That's it. Yeah, I mean, just like from my experience, it's I nice, feel. Though. Yeah, but they, these people were like very down to earth. You know what I mean? I actually think they had like just smoked a bowl before they got in oh, my car. For sure. But it was a very nice that's to like be able now, to. Though, so it's fine. Yeah, that's wild to me. So, do you know if like any, like for instance, like National Grid? Like, you couldn't smoke and, like, go work at National Grid, right? I mean... But, I don't but think it's... they're allowed to tell you you can't. Yeah, right. That's what I mean. Because if, if it's, like, legal, then it's, like... I don't think you, they can tell you you can't. It could be a company policy. Yeah, because that's the, the other NBA, thing is company policies. the NBA, you're t- that's a... It's a restricted substance for the NBA. Yeah, I can see that. But it's so interesting to me, you know? It's yeah, also it's just... that it's, like, oh, you can do it, but it's legal to do it if you... Yeah, you you can do it if you want, but you can't have this position. You know what I mean? It's like I bet if the company is based in Boston, they can't make it a law. But I bet if it's based if it's a nationally owned company, like it's a nationwide company, Mm -hmm. maybe they are allowed to do that. I couldn't tell. I can't. I don't know for sure. Do you smoke? I mean, like never before my uh, driving times. But yeah, when I get home, I smoke. Yeah, every day. No. I can never get into smoking. Yeah. I have asthma, so it always hurts my lungs too much. It doesn't. It, the payoff isn't worth it. True, true, true. Have you ever eaten it? I don't like edibles. Yeah. I did eat an edible by accident. Yeah, and you my dad's, fucked up, right? My dad's edible. <laughs> can I put this in the book? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, shit. This is what did happened. you eat the whole thing? I ate. Well, so this is what happened. Because so they my, usually take a while to kick my in. My dad has some because he has arthritis in his shoulder. Okay. And he, medicinal. <laughs> medicinal, yeah. It's for medicinal uses. So he will, like, eat it when he gets home, but it's in the form of these chocolate things. And for a little while, when I... For a little while, like, when I was working in the call center, I was living at home for, like, two months while I was waiting for my new apartment. And we were... Me and my dad were on this, like, exact same diet. We were, like, dieting together because we yeah. were both kind of green puffy <laughs> and need to lose some weight. And so... <laughs> so he ate a chocolate and you thought it was okay? We had this chocolate. We had this chocolate that we shared and it was in the refrigerator. It was in the freezer. And it was 80% dark chocolate. It was the only thing I could have as a sweet. 
and my dad had wrapped up his weed chocolate the same way and I didn't know and he didn't tell me and I didn't even know that he had weed chocolate in the fridge but I took it yeah thinking it was mine and in the middle of my day in the call center I ate my weed chocolate no you accident, didn't but I didn't know it was weed chocolate and I'm sitting on the phone like what the hell <laughs> Oh my God. I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, am I like having a panic attack? Am I sick? Like, why do I feel funny? But it didn't feel like bad funny. It just yeah. felt like funny funny. Yeah, like, yeah. And I couldn't shake it. Like, no matter what I did, like, I tried like, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. When you're drunk, you can kind of like <laughs> pat it out of you, like by the little oh slap on your God. face. But no, you can't do that when you have a body high. Oh so my I'm God. So I'm sitting here on the phone talking to clients. Can I ask you a question? What? Was this like your first... This was my first edible experience, so I didn't oh even know. Oh my god! So you were glued to the chair and everything, I like didn't you were like. I know that it, this, like, what it, what the feeling was at all. I never yeah. had a feeling, so I actually didn't know I had eaten. I didn't know my dad had, mar- like, yeah, chocolate. Yeah. I didn't know I had eaten weed chocolate, and so when I get up out of my chair at the end of the day and I leave from work and I, um, like I hey, used to take the you? train home. Hi, I take the train I'm home. Good, thank you. And I got home and I was like, oh my god, dad. Feel so funny today. I don't know what's wrong with me. And he's like, Hannah, did you take me the last of my chocolate out of the freezer? And I was like, No. I was like, I took my chocolate out of the freezer. Honey, you took my weed chocolate to work. Uh, and I was like, Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, yep. Reasons why I felt weird all day, Dad. Thank you so much. That is awesome. So apparently, a couple of these seagulls just like straight up sit down right in this parking lot they're just like bro this is our house this is our parking lot and we refuse to move the next passenger on the boston bond goes by the name of kaylin interesting name no t just kaylin very cool okay so we have a and very short amount Kaylin, of time to do this. Unfortunately, but had her car this is a very interesting story and, and i want to go, go ahead and, and share it with you guys the so story we are in the car with kaylin what an interesting name, let me just tell you, first off. Thank you, thank you. Um, from Milwaukee, where are you staying from? Um, well, so I'm actually, I live here, but I came in from Milwaukee today. I was tr- I was vacationing there for the last, like, week. Okay, like visiting? Visiting friends, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, so I'm driving her right now to actually the impound lot, right? That's to right. driving to the tow lot? The tow lot. Yeah. Man, that is a bummer. So, and it's the craziest story, and it's like, come on give her some slack but yeah so what happened exactly so uh what happened is when i flew out to milwaukee to visit some friends uh my brother had my car and he was going to stay at my apartment before he flew out of boston we were both in town for a wedding and he had my car and it turns out that some lights went off and it needed to go into the shop so he actually ended up driving my dad's car to my apartment and parked it in my paid for parking space that i rent from my apartment building for a good amount of money. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're in Boston. It's a good amount of money. Yeah, yeah, okay. Year. Yeah, every month. Like, um, you're spending, like, 180 you know... 180 bucks. 180 bucks. Okay, so you're you're spending, like, you know, over $1,000 a year just to, you know, have your car here. Exactly. Which is crazy, but okay, go ahead. I mean, yeah, so I so I have this, this spot. Um, my brother parks my dad's car there, and, uh, well, my car's in the shop. So I fly back in tonight. I start traveling at, like, 3 o'clock this afternoon. I get back off the tee, walk home, and there's no car in my parking space. Not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Um, so I call the towing company. Turns out they towed it about 24 hours after my brother parked it in the parking space um, because it doesn't have the little sticker on the back of it that says that it's registered there. And so now I'm going to go pay more than what I pay in rent for my little parking space. Oh, my space. gosh. This girl is going to dish out $200 when she already has a spot that she has paid for because they didn't have this. Now, my thing is, like, and we, we talked about this, obviously, before yeah. started recording the podcast, but, dude, call, give her a call, you but know? Just let me know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, give me a call. Be like, hey, someone's parked in your spot that isn't your car. Is it? Do you know this person? Are you doing it? And if it's not... Hell yeah, get rid of them. Yeah. But it's my, just give me a heads up. Also, the towing company didn't call my dad, who the car is registered for it. For it. It's been like three days. And so the person who owns the car was never informed that their car. Oh, so it would just keep, the price would keep going exactly. up and up and up and up. Yeah, the woman when I called was like, oh, I was surprised that nobody called yet. And I was, I was like, 
did you were you gonna let somebody know that it was gonna happen? So there's a lot of things that I'm frustrated about at the moment. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. It was nice to meet you too. How do you think she should approach it? I'm saying that you she shouldn't give any lead. I don't think she should at all be like, I can understand why you know because I mean obviously yeah sometimes it's nice I mean, to to level with them but crazy. Like, yeah. Boston parking is nuts. But here's the thing, that spot is paid for. It is. But they they will pull the card that it's like okay it's paid for but not to that license plate right? Yeah, that's but, what they're gonna say. Yeah, but you know, I don't know. Like, you can't have that much to do that you can't even call someone real quick and be like, hey, just wondering if this is yours so we don't tow it, you know? Because then that puts you in a in a bad spot. And not only that, but like, you will never want to live here, you know? Like you don't want to you know you don't want to deal with that, you know? Like, what if I had a rental car or something? Some like I mean my car could get like. I could need to get to go in the shop again some other time, and now I have to make sure I do this right away. Well, she's going to figure it out. She's going to pay the 200 bucks, get it over with. But, um... This fun. has been an enjoyable ride over, though. I will say that. Oh, well, thank you. And I think you. I'm handling this She is. Well. She is calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> she is, you know, not freaking out. She probably did freak out for a minute. Oh, I mean, I did. I did. But I pulled it together. That's great, that's great. Well, it was great to meet you, Kaylin. Nice to meet you. And thanks for being part of the Boston Bond. That is it, guys. That's it for the Boston Bond. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to leave you guys with one final clip. And remember, kids, this is what your brain looks like in Boston on drugs. Don't do drugs. Keep focusing forward. I've seen a lot of people on heroin. It doesn't look like that. It's too bad though, you know? Yeah, I know.